Good evening, I'm Catherine Nolan and today we continue to speak about heroes of our time. And this broadcast is dedicated to legendary person, the leader of the Donbass defense, Igor Strelkov. Now he is the hero of the entire southeast of Ukraine. Tragic events connected with the events on the Maidan, Kyo in Kiev and genocide against Russian-speaking population in the southeast of Ukraine couldn't leave the patriot and man of honor indifferent. In March 2014, he has been serving to Crimea, where again his first small group of volunteers, and went with them to the Donetsk region, where the Kiev junta had just begun a large-scale repression against the local population. On the way, the Strelkov garrison are joining people from different regions of Ukraine. To start fighting, they decide from the Krematorsk agglomeration, namely in Slyansk, which is located on strategically important highway rostov Kharkiv. About this battle we mentioned in the previous chapter. The appearance of volunteers, laid by Colonel, more like the white guard aristocrat, shocked everyone. Local radical security forces began to move to the anti-fascist militia side, but near Slavinsk there were already significant group of special forces, army and bounty hunters from the Nazi right sector, who arrived from the northwest of Ukraine and Kiev. Hearing that city entered anti-fascist militia, special forces convoy led by large Kiev chiefs tried to break to Slavinsk, but was smashed on the head. Pro-Kiev forces retreated in panic and the local men, convinced in the seriousness of the visitor colonel, began to massively join the anti-fascist militia under his leadership. Fortunately, the captured weapons from the first days of fighting had taken enough. Next insanely bold Strelkov's action was blocking the units of the 25th A1 Brigade, followed by their disarmament and withdrawal of the BMDs. After the beginning of the DPR creation, Igor Stelkov was recognized as the head of the anti-fascist people's militia. And later, after the referendum on the 11th of May, when people officially support the republic's independence, Stelkov became its defense minister and commander of armed forces. Igor Stelkov argues that went to Slavyansk by the call of his heart. Colonel's aims are most ambitious. After the Crimea became the part of Russian Federation, Stelkov immediately left to the southeast, to seek justice, upholding the will of people who were still rising from their knees and began to fight with the Nazis who came to their native land. He came and led all alone. The times goes by, and now the head of the Donbass defense have already experienced and cohesive fighters who taste the victory, which intend to protect their homes and lands from invaders until their last breath. In turn, our team wishes good luck and new victories to Igor Strelkov. We believe that Strelkov will become the winner and will save Donbass people from Ukrainian Nazi detachments. In the next edition, we will continue to speak about heroes of our time. And in the meantime, that is it for today. See you next time.